Moving on from question one of logical reasoning drill set number five over at lawhub.lsac.org. We've got the highlight tool ready and we're going to engage the question stem to start. It reads, the reasoning in McCloskey's argument is flawed in that the argument fails to consider. So we're going to highlight kind of piecemeal here. Reasoning is flawed in that the argument fails to consider. So we need to split this up a little bit because we want to focus on what the argument isn't considering logically, hopefully as a prediction before we even start to look at the answer choices here as a identify the flaw question task is one of our big four most predictable question tasks, especially if we're looking at it in real life scenario. So we're going to read McCloskey's statements with our highlight tool still selected so that we can identify and mark what the explicit conclusion is as soon as we recognize it. So McCloskey states 80% of Neanderthal stone tools ever discovered display asymmetrical chipping, while only 30% of Homo erectus stone tools discovered display asymmetrical chipping. The stone tools discovered by the Shibato expedition display asymmetrical chipping. So they are more likely Neanderthal than Homo erectus. Well, we're going to have our conclusion just as this final sentence, and it's stating that the stone tools discovered by the Shibato expedition display asymmetrical chipping, and that means they are more likely Neanderthal and Homo erectus. And this probably does have one of the most common and most recognizable flaws that you should be able to predict, which is, it says 80% of Neanderthal stone tools have this chipping. 30% of Homo erectus stone tools have this chipping. We don't know what the actual total is for either Neanderthal stone tools discovered or Homo erectus stone tools that were uh, discovered. So, for instance, 80%, if there's 1,000 Neanderthal stone tools, then that's just going to be 800. But 30% of 100,000 would be 30,000. So we know that our common flaw here is that we may have different sizes of the whole populations of Neanderthal stone tools versus Homo erectus stone tools. So we're going to have that in mind. Thank you for watching this question explanation video from LSAT drill number five over at lawhub.lsac.org. If you enjoyed the tips that it contained, please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel to be notified when additional question explanation videos are produced by my guru. Also, check out the description below for links to additional resources from my guru, including links to full sets of video explanations for entire LSAT prep tests from LawHub. But for now, let's get back to this question explanation. That stone tools may become asymmetrically chipped through repeated usage. Well, we don't care how they become asymmetrically chipped. So I highlight that, we eliminate choice AE. That needs additional information almost immediately. Choice B, that many stone tools displaying asymmetrical chipping may be neither Neanderthal nor Homo erectus. Well, we're concerned only with the comparison in the conclusion that they are more likely Neanderthal than Homo erectus. So what would be neither is completely irrelevant to the argument presented by McCloskey. So we can eliminate B, hopefully, almost immediately as well. Then choice C, that a greater percentage of Homo erectus tools may have originally displayed asymmetrical chipping, but that this identifying feature may have worn away over time. Okay, well, again, a greater percentage needs more specificity. It's too vague. Additionally, may have originally displayed asymmetrical chipping. Okay, did it or did it not? May have worn away over time. Did it or did it not? We've got way too many questions that are left unanswered to apply choice C, so we should be able to eliminate it for any of those reasons. Then choice D, that there may be many more extant Homo erectus tools than Neanderthal tools. Ding, ding, ding. This is exactly what we hopefully predicted before we even began engaging with the answer choices here. So D should be selected almost immediately and hopefully it will allow us to go more briskly through E, which reads the number of tools recovered by the Shibato expedition and thus discounts the possibility that the sample is not representative. Well, there is an issue of sampling, but it's not about the Shibato expedition specifically. It's about the total amount of Neanderthal stone tools that have been discovered versus the total amount of Homo erectus stone tools that have been discovered or are extant. So 
This is why we want to be bold and proactively select D so that we're not talking ourselves into choice E because we've eliminated everything else. But hopefully you'd already selected choice D a little while ago.